What a great pleasure it is to welcome Susan Fisher Sterling back to Moore. As you may recall, she was with us for our 2013 Visionary Woman Awards when she introduced one of our honorees, Anne King Lagos. And now today we are honoring Susan. Susan is the director of the National Museum of Women in the Arts and has built her career and the stature of the museum around the message of equity for women through the example of excellence in the arts. She first joined the museum after graduating from Princeton University with both an MA and a PhD in art history, specializing in modern and contemporary art. Prior to becoming the museum's director, she served as its associate curator, curator of modern and contemporary art, and then chief curator and deputy director. In those roles, she organized and oversaw exhibitions and publications on a wide range of contemporary women artists, including Carrie Mae Weems, Sarah Charlesworth, Hollis Sigler, and Nikki de, de, Saint, de Saint Fall, among others. Susan was also the force behind bringing the major traveling exhibitions to the museum, including WAC, Art, and the Feminist Revolution, and one of her crowning achievements was the creation of the New York Avenue Sculpture Project in 2010, which featured changing installations of monumental public art by contemporary women in the heart of Washington, DC. The National Wim Museum of Women in the Arts has flourished under students, Susan's leadership. Its 25th anniversary celebration during the 2012-13 season was a year-long celebration of major events, culminating with the museum's announcement that it achieved its legacy of women in the arts endowment goal of $50 million. Among her honors are orders of merit from Brazil and Norway, the President's Award of the Women's Caucus for Art, and in 2011, she was selected as one of Art Table's most 30 influential women in the visual arts. Susan, you truly are an inspiration to the women here today. It's a joy to, and, uh, and an honor to have you with us. Congratulations. By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I hereby confer on you, Susan Fisher Sterling, the honorary degree of Doctor of Fine Arts, and declare that your name is to be forever on the college's roll of honorary members. Thank you, President Fitzgibbon, faculty, board, and also congratulations to the graduates today. As the director of the first museum, it is deeply meaningful to accept this honorary award from Moore College of Art and Design, especially in recognition of our shared mission and ideals. I'd like to start my remarks today with a project, a group project. I'm sure you all are familiar with these. I'm going to throw out some words to the graduates, and I'd like to sh have a show of hands if these words describe you. Creative and quirky. Show. How about smart and competitive? Okay. Self-conscious and anxious. <laughs> Irreverent and contrary. Okay. How about a brat. <laughs> These are some of the most potent words that were used to describe me when I came out of school and started working. Some of them were very flattering. Some of them quite obviously were not. But I saw myself in each and every one of them. Why do I choose to share them with you today? I have three reasons. 
The first is that it's always been hard for me to talk about myself. But we need to be able to do that. Second, as much as I am inner directed, I am keenly aware of those around me and what they have to say. And third, I give you these words because I have to work with people every day, and you all will too, and you'll need to understand yourself and how others see you in order to reach your goals. When I was in graduate school just up Route 1 at Princeton, I had really great expectations. My goal was to become the greatest female art historian. That was certainly young hubris, and I had lots of it then, which made it very difficult for me in a department where my student dean outright told us that women did not fare well. I hung in there, I struggled through my dissertation, endless hours of very lonely research. I achieved my degrees, and then I realized that if I was going to have to publish all my lifetime, I would certainly perish. So I made a swerve off the academic track, set aside my dreams of becoming the greatest female art historian, or so I thought, and started looking for a job as a curator of contemporary art. Did I land my dream job in, out of college after my swerve? No, I did not. A recession was in full force, there were very few jobs, and despite all my vaunted credentials, I was lucky to find work at all. At the time, I felt I had, quote, ended up, unquote, rather unceremoniously as an associate curator at a new, untried, and deeply controversial museum for women in the arts in Washington, D.C. But I stand before you all today as director of that museum, the National Museum of Women in the Arts, 28 years later. How did that happen? Well, obviously, in this short speech, I'm not going to take you through my entire growth curve. But I will tell you that within five years of working at the museum, I realized two things that have motivated me ever since. First, that championing women in the arts is a worthwhile life's goal. And second, I'm not here just for myself. I am here for others. So these words that I quoted at the start of my remarks that you helped me group think for a second, while well, over time their meaning morphed and changed. As descriptors, they became no longer about me, but they became much more about how I work with others. Today, I use all my creative, quirky, smart, competitive, self-conscious anxiety to work with colleagues and peers to persuade, influence, and convince others of the value of women in the arts. Now, I use my contrary questioning and irreverent edge to effectuate social change. And, while I no longer feel I'm quite the brat I was, I turned my brattiness into leadership, and I've become a true creative enabler for others. These words that were once used by others to help me visualize myself are now self-actualizing. And from this shift in perspective, I gain energy, purpose, and fulfillment every day even when the weeks are tough and the months are difficult. So my charge to all of you more graduates today is to find the words that others use to describe you, the words that ring true, the words that help you see yourself critically as well as lovingly. Take that visualization and allow it to provide a path to you over time towards self-actualization self in your art and your work in your life. You may not become the greatest female art historian, as I soon discovered, but you could very well end up becoming 
one of the most important voices for women in the arts. Congratulations again, graduates. Thank you, Susan. What an inspiring speech. We appreciate it very much. And we are so happy to welcome you as part of our community, and we appreciate all that you do for women in the arts.